came back. Oh my god. You can't imagine how nervous I was. But yeah, there we go. I was able to find the save uh, that I did for the game. I don't, for some stupid reason, I don't put it in the same uh, folder where I always put my save files. So that's why I was not able to find it, but there we go. Uh, let me pull off skip for a moment. All right. Okay, this is where we were. Incinerator. But okay. Uh, sorry about that, but yeah, finally we're now where we left off the la the past stream, so everything should work. She'll be working fine. All right. I really hope that. Actually, let me check at my stream on my cell phone just to make sure. Okay, there we go. But yeah, this is where we last left off, right at the incinerator. So let's continue and let's see how everything goes. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah, I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Let's go. What the hell is going on? I learned to do uh, saves. Well, uh, no, what is not the name? Uh, a backup of my save files because in the past I was I had problems with some games that actually have the they always highlight new game the moment you turn on the game and you accidentally can press new game instead of continue and after several moments of frustration when that happened I learned to back up all my save files what's wrong are you okay jumpy you came to get me of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yes. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? <laughs> I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. <sighs> Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. You have me at a disadvantage. And I don't like that. You know me. But I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Hmm. Another irritating insect. And how do you know that? Hmm? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time anyway. It's time for me to go. First is one. Give me your hand. Uh. Eight. And with this... Nine. The Ninth Man. Kubota's bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh. What the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! What? Why isn't it opening? <sighs> One more time. <laughs> now open! What is this? Why? 
The digital route should be nine. It has to be nine. Then why? Why isn't it opening? Now! No! Uh, oh, that was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I oughta rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah, you finally figured it out, dumbass. Oh. <sighs> Ace, you killed Kubota. Nijisaki and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right, we'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door five alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number nine is dangerous. Whoever had the nine bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Adding nine to any number doesn't change the digital route, which means that number nine could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. Two, you wanted the number nine bracelet for yourself so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Niji Saki. Three, even if his number hadn't been nine, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened nine years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. Four. But last, and perhaps the most disturbing, you used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this nonary game was. Was it truly life or death or simply a harmless prank? You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that, that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid, but his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me. Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. Then you mean to say... Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man. But I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. <laughs> well... I wouldn't blame you. Last but not least, let's talk about Musashido's death. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle, which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. 
You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took, and then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. It wasn't a very good plan. Had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace, Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it. But why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just read it. Huh. Let's see. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. Oh, so that's why the camera was there. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. Hmm. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was a witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. <sighs> but yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. <sighs> Ace. You figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes, so it would seem. I was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Niji Saki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. <sighs> Niji Saki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap, and I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah, by manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this notary game happened. Am I right, Santa? Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any- Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki. No doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> but hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all, the person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki. I was one of the kids in the nonary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Number one, I ain't Zero. What? Wait, what? Sure, I was helping Zero out, 
but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said all of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <clears throat> to save someone. Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw... Uh... What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Uh, oh, my head! Uh, my head, it feels like it's gonna pop. Seven, what the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> there were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones in the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. <sighs> the transmitters were put in Building Q, and the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but, but there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason, she was placed in the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. <sighs> I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... Okay, that went really, really interesting. He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures, then? Imagine a river that splits in two, like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction, it can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river source in the past will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never knew will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happened on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I'm also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you can say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. At nine years, I will be zero. Where did she go? June. No. Akane. 
What did you go? Santa! Why is it lower? Oh shit! Freeze. Santa got the gun. Where did he pick it up when we weren't watching? Not that he turned the tables on Ace though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up. Sure he's not about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace is not putting up any fight. I mean, I don't think I will either, but he just looks drained. I guess he's going for the door. Huh? He doesn't need to verify to go to the to the door, but Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? You can get to any number of doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? What the hell does he does that even mean? Shit, they're out. And now the gates shut. And we are trapped. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They are all looking at me. At least seven headed she's gone. He seems to be alright. Well, I guess there is no harm in trying. Let's see if this door is still open. Damn! Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious! Okay, but he's... Shit, we gotta do something. Maybe you can still get through, get out through door 9. There's the red. Yeah, alright. We can do this. I just gotta... No, it's not gonna work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 equals 26. 2 plus 6 equals 8. Is there any combination that will work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Sure, why not? I don't think I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to need them ever again. She certainly looks she certainly looks purposeful. Though like she's writing equations, a lot of them. Huh? Oh man, she doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, you don't need to be ripping face out like that. Jeez! What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! Alright. At least I haven't got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Huh. Huh. What? Then there's no other way. Two, four, five, and seven. So that means Lotus space. Lotus? So she figured it out though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Wow, where the hell did that come from? Unless you expect that about as much as it is. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, alright? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. Uh, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh-huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. As a stop to one, Lotus, we can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however, however, I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is this? Why? The digital route should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why? Why isn't it opening? Because it's not nine. Just to see. Why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Two 
2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. We can't get to the door, we can't get out. The walls are too high, there is no way in hell we could get to the hole seven popped up nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at, the, at this door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. And now we got a Canavision. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his ear eardrum, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking. What he was feeling. What he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. To the morphic field set, we were resonant and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonance event melted into him, and we became one inside of Junpei. Somehow, I found myself in Junpei's mind nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time? Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was held happening in front of me. Come on, over here! That was my brother Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were s seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up! We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Okay, so we're nine years in the past. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in, in a fist fight. A girl watching them began to cry. I wanna go home, she cried. I wanna go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It has been two hours since an honor game began. We're starting to feel apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we will call him Snake. Hello, everyone? Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us in his life, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fight died down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. His hand were na nine four leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. 
We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now don't ever forget, so long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished the tension of only a few minutes before was gone, we were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer, and opened several of the number doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside down funeral. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time, it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that mean only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began planning. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already, I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled to the bend away from the incinerator and slipped down into the hall. We came out on the other side of the door line. On the wall opposite, opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went to those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I lead the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother, Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other ch children, the ones who had gone through door 9 before us, were up ahead. I could feel them cheering each other on. We ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and keep running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps, Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop. But I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... Oh no, where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I had it me when we passed through the vent. Then, had I dropped it as, as we slid out? I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I could not tell the others. They will stop me. I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship. I hid 
the shadows. A moment later, I saw a rush of wind as they ran past me out the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I called down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran to the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just what I thought it would be. Sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor. But as I ran back toward the stairs and freed them... <laughs> the door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Gentaro Hongo. Nine years later, we will call him Abe. Ah, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo hang close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of instant to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No! Stop! Let go of me! Let go! I shook my body and flayed my arms, trying to desperately to get Hongo to, get, to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! He had me... He had it on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! Then suddenly... Akane! The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane! He cried my name again as he left towards Hongo. You came back! He cried out. But then... Ah. You're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling his body to the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number 9 door. Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fist clenched. But those fists never reach Hongo. With a cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hong Kong glanced at me me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asteroids appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelet carelessly under the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me, as though I said were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later, the two other lost lights shot shot as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with a knife. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My soul was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lowly around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! What? Then it started again. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in 18 minutes. Hey, Junpei Vision now. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. Man, I knew what I was gonna say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years. What the hell? 
What the hell? What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiment. You aren't making any sense. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, god damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus is not happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. What else can I say about it? But what the hell is that? <gasps> what is that? What else can I say? The floor opened and a machine runs up off it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the mechanic, the machine scared me. But I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off. Even as more took the, their place and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face, staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything is gonna be okay. Ah, man, I wish the thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in fifteen minutes. All right, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's gonna be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey, move! Ah! Hey! We're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people around. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure. I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that... Huh? Well... At least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. Oh, shit. This is different. Uh, let me explain that. In the original version, the DS version of this game, the final puzzle actually is a Sudoku. But I think this one is different. Also, hey, Wyvern, what's up? Welcome to the stream of... Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. It's got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across a five by five grid. The number range from one to eight. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah, well, we can hope, right? All right, puzzle, how do you work? Oh man, that goddamn voice again. Incineration will begin in... 13 minutes. Shit, 13 minutes. Can we really do this? Probably not. My hair feels like it's gonna pop. My hair was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I cannot get any more information from him. 
I built a second stick by as I started a screen completely lost. My cheeks feel hot as tears parted over them. Then I hear a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Rest against the window in the entire door was a face. A frightening evil face. It was Hongo. Holy shit, it's a giant eye! How long have you been watching me? Oh, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> his lord was muffled by the door, but still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back her tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Huh? If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, hey, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face of my bracelet showed a 5. 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 9. I ran to the door with a 9 on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Congo muffled voice from across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. <laughs> now start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution! I can't! Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's gonna be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it'll be very painful. <laughs> He's heard a lot of echoes across the room. And even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in 10 minutes. I was crying. Grey engulfing sobs broken by hiccups that shocked my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous wave. Somehow, I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the monitor. I can't! I just can't. There's no, there's no way. I can't figure this out. What was I going to do? I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't even knew where to start. Fear scattered my toes, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating, and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot, so hot. I could not breathe. I felt dicey. My heart roared in my chest, as if it would pound itself to pieces. I 
reach into my pocket. I wrap my hand around the thing I come back to get. The tall jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! 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 Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea though. Clover is looking at me. And I think Snake might have figured it out. No? It doesn't matter. They are in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here? Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck! Did something break our connection? I swear I just hear her. Shit! Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He was not in the room, of course. But I hear it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I scream as loud as I could. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. Then that means... Akane! Akane! Akane, are you, a, are you in an accelerator right now? Yes, I am! How, how did you know? I cannot believe that he knew that. Now we understand what Santa means. Right. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. Jumpy! We don't have time! As leaky as I called, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it! And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all this means. I know why the Nonary Gang was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane. I, I can't believe it, but... There's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself the way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her, no matter what. Incineration will begin in... Six minutes. The voice reminded me of how much time I had left. Jumpy! Yeah, I know. Just hang on, alright? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, alright? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes are not. My heart burned with my feelings for him. Alright. Time to get to work, Junpei. Is Snake talking to them about something? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I will apolog I apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. We got numbers all over this grid. I think the panels are out of order. 
So I just need to switch this out. Starting at is not going to accomplish anything. I'll just have to try it. <sighs> Think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. Oh my god, this is gonna be a pain because... I have the idea of the original that it was a Sudoku, but this is not a Sudoku. Oh my god. I think I got it. I'm gonna try something. If that is true, I will be like, oh my god. But it's just by looking at this and at the letters. I think that gave me an idea. Let me see. Is there an S? Yes, there is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the password... Is password... Wait, it's not? Oh shoot, I forgot the, num the numbers actually. Is it because I swear it looked like that? Oh fuck, true. Nine. Two plus four plus five plus seven. Yes, that's it. Yeah, thanks for sh I totally didn't knew when the numbers pop up, so I was like, okay. Akane, did you get it? Yes, I did. I solved it. I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did. Now I just have to press enter. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay, I will! I need the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been confirmed. Incineration system has been disabled. out to him, but they were a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, logging and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I talk about him, I thought my heart would burst. Whew. I can't quite believe I did that. But I'm so glad. So glad. I... I feel like my heart's on fire. No. I don't have time to think about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane! Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course! That's fine! I wiped the tears of my eyes and nodded. Vigorously. Even though I knew he could not see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lolo don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your life, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay? Ah, shut it. Right. Okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I if I have not pressed the enter key yet? All right, nothing holding me back now. Here goes. Wait. Incineration will begin in ninety seconds. <coughs> it doesn't sound like it's stopping. <sighs> what the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe you didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again, and again, and again. Okay, it doesn't work either. The alarm's still going off. 
What the hell is going on? I got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck is he not? He didn't he's stop me. Incineration begin in sixty seconds. Wait, of course. That's what the numbers that showed up on the puzzle after the puzzle mean. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight. Snake, clover, me, seven, and lotus. Then, door nine. No, that's it. The number of the door is not a nine. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that. Holy shit! Of course. Then we just have to put the right numbers in the red and. Incineration will begin in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I don't have a shine. Man, I sure hope they can just trust me in this one, or we are all fucked. Alright, no time to explain, just go. Quick, verify your numbers on the red. Verify? Who? What combination? All of us! We all need to verify! Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Hurry, 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 hurry! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, damn fucking Christ! No, no time to be happy. Time to go. <laughs> Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go! Come on, guys, move it! Okay? They are all true. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. And there goes the door. No, don't come down yet. You are not done. We still gotta find the dead. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that guy sure can love when he wants to. The legs over and lost are totally out of energy. Snake is shaking his head weirdly. He's going to take a nap, but... Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But nothing. Are open. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried his name, until my voice was almost gone from screaming and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! <gasps> Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The same time of his hair in my ear made me feel like I was home. It was beat, it was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him, him as far as they will go, and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I had to feel this warm for another human body in what had to seem like an eternity. I just wanted to stay here in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I passed through the door, my bracelet had begun to come down to death. I leaped away from him and looked around. The door has a ring closed. I spoke the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to and scan all the bracelets I left on the one. I left the one Congo had dropped on the other panel. That was it. Oh. I took a deep breath and looked around again. The 
few to ten who we call seven in nine years, and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung up. All right, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Oh, it was right. It was time we get moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise and they nodded. We took off running up the final staircase. Time for more running. But if they can't get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My hair's beating so hard I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh? Is Seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? <laughs> What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why'd it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is 26. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base 10? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base 16? Zero through F. After nine, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? What comes after that? Uh. Hmm. Uh. Oh. Q. 26. And what does that mean? That wasn't a 9 on the door. It was a Q. A fucking lowercase Q. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Thanks for more running. God, my dice are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for it. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest? No, I can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many more of these steps, guys. Right? Let's run. Run like a bullet down a rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally! <laughs> Jeez, I can barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Hold yourself together. You're almost there. All right, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes, we're finally here! Please do. Sure, you look a bit heavy, Dor. But you are the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you are the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open, and you are gonna open now. Thank you, Dor. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was a voice. He gave it a small, pressuring squeeze. I was so happy I feel like an icicle melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us would have been kidnapped. We're finally able to escape from the gigantic mess. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. He gave a thunderous roar, and it finally slipped beneath the waves. His last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. 
it's over. How it was. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No? That was wrong. That was not it at all. I was sure of it. It was not the end. It was only the beginning. It was only a prologue to what will happen in nine years. Uh, this is the gigantic. They actually mentioned something that is actually true. The Titanic had uh, two identical twin boats. The gigantic and it had another one. The gigantic was supposedly used like a like a hospital boat during the World War. I already read that on Google and that apparently that's actually true. So there was the Titanic, the gigantic. And there was another ship, but I forgot the name. Yes, finally. Air. Huh? Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Uh, I gotta admit, it doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You have... You have got to be shitting me. What? It can't be. This is... the building in the Nevada desert. The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q. Sure enough. That's a desert out there. With mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think i ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right, or bracelets. I guess I never really got a good look at them on the other side of one of those. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip, like in an automatic car. That's it? There's nothing else? Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Jumpy. Eh? Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. But yeah, that's that's it. That's officially the good ending of the game of 999 of nine hours, nine pairs, and nine doors. Oh my god! Yeah, I can skip the credits. So yeah, I'm gonna let them run again. I'm gonna say. Really fun game. I really love this one. And yeah, it's the same studio that later on going to develop the Dangan Rompa game. There's still two more games to play of this trilogy that I will probably be playing later in the future. Because the next one is really, really long too. And I don't want to really get stuck with uh, this really. Uh, long trilogy. I will be playing it for sure, but not back to back. I have a few other games I want to play before the next one. But yeah, this is a good introduction of what you guys will see in the future when I continue with this game. Really fun, really entertaining. I had a lot of struggles with the puzzles and more, but I really loved it. I'm still surprised that the last puzzle is not a Sudoku, it's actually a different one. So that was actually really cool. A different, a different thing between this and the DS one. Are you okay? Oh, okay. We got more stuff. Never mind. 
Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other, on a small hill, looking down at a towel as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> what does that even mean? You've been green then. Oh, ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada kids. They circled past. For an SUV, this thing has a pretty smooth ride. Sure was nice of someone to leave it. For us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. I feel like it was a present, you know. Anyway, we jumped in. And now we are screaming across the desk. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and, our, and I are all squeezing the back seat here. I still cannot believe we let her drive. This is so fun! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around, and there's no speed limit! Hey, uh, Clover, watch those bumps, alright? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it! I can't help if I'm big, alright? Suck it up! Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop, I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license! Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <laughs> <laughs> and Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Oh, shit! God damn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I don't think a car like this could go this fast. For sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we'd run into the junior high student. They've been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw we saw what they were doing. Jumpy ran out of them, furious. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped off the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me! Officer! Please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy's prowl on the ground with a face covered in big, swelling lump. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen off. Yeah, I, I guess I could have. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh. You mean the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies. He put some grass on the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they do to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that, so I... Hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Cause they probably don't know any more than they do. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Guitaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Still tied up. I asked him if his mouth tape shut. His eyes just look empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. 
I wonder if he even cares what happened to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you were not. You old bastard. Let's get the tape out of your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply, if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, you can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness... I think that's enough for out of you, Paul. Time for the tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little more. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own. Catch him when he finally slipped up. And during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <laughs> I'll let Hongo have something to say. Alright, fine. I'll let you talk, but you gotta behave. What? <clears throat> Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Madrigal, of the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid use that extract to create Sopor. Its creation was a tremendous boom to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is gonna go on forever. Day is going back on. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I will just, I'll just come here either, right? Here, uh, this is for you. What is this? This is a for you doll. Uh, his name is Junpei. Two people something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn. It's not enough to fit in his palm. Jumpy, are you sure it's a uh, for you doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so that means it's for you, right? I. Uh, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? Wait, what? That, that's... oh man. Oh man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, y you know how after June, um, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Okay. So, uh, I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes. I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this. It me. So we always... Together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reach my hand out and pick up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny charm body. Oh, Jumpy. I'll never forget you, I promise. Jumpy looks straight into my eyes and says just five words. I'll never forget you either. Let's 
sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hill. We sat very in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened and one by one the lights of the town began to flicker up. There is still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I am concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago she died in incinerator on the Gigantic. But she's still alive now, as June. But how? Was it because I tapped into the morphic field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. Alright, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense, he's blind. He could not have seen her body anyway. But Seven? He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or wait... Maybe that's not it at all. There's one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? You look satisfied. No. No way. He couldn't. Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road! Huh? What? Hmm? The hell? She looks like the mommy we were they were talking about. The mommy fight lady. The boarding gaze of the Nevada sound pounded down on her head. The desert around her, rippling with head, with heat. Standing there on the shimmering plain was a woman. Her arm out and her thumb up. It will not be long before Jumpy realized who she was. Oh god, yeah she was the famous Alice. But yeah, there we go. So that's it for 999. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. So yeah, that's all the chart now. That's officially the end of the game. My god, this game was a real crazy ride for sure. So yeah, this was the true ending. Ooh. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna stop the stream here. This was your host, uh... Rexasaur, uh, hold on. I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop the stream because this is the end of 9 hours, 9 pairs, 9 doors The second game of the trilogy, I don't know when I'm gonna play it I will probably guys let you know but Because I still have some games planned for the future I will let you know guys But yeah, thanks for coming to the stream I really hope you guys had fun This was your host Rexosaurus. Again, I'm sorry for the technical issues that happened at the beginning of the stream. I'm really sorry. But yeah, I will see you guys uh, next time for more of this crazy-ass game. So yeah, thank you everyone and thanks for coming.